keeping the centrality of millets in their farming systems, the communities of DDS initiated a localized public distribution system, which was a very seminal act by them as far back as in 1997. In this system, they emphasize on the principles of local production, local distribution and local storage. They identified all the poor in their communities to whom they made an entitlement of a certain amount of millets every month. They issued them the ration cards and they have been supplying them millets month on month through their own ration cards. So sorghum is the main crop distributed in this fashion and this has rejected rice and wheat based PDS which is sponsored by the government of India. It is a very nutritionally inferior system compared to the kind of system that the communities of DDS have been following in their communities. Especially some of the recent research tells us that 20 percent of all diabetes in this country is because of the PDS rice consumed by the poor, both the urban poor as well as the rural poor. If you consider this, if you juxtapose this information, you can see how wise were uh, DDS communities almost 20 years ago when they made a decision that their local sorghum based public distribution system should be an answer to a highly centralized weak uh, grain based public distribution system of the government. Millets are the storehouses of all macro and micronutrients. Give any parameter whether they are protein, energy, they are iron, calcium, minerals. In all these farms, millets score far above rice and wheat. Therefore, why should they be kept out of the, our public distribution system? This is an argument that both DDS and Millet Network of India have constantly championed for over 10 years. Today, we sit with our fingers crossed to see whether the new food security bill being brought in front of the parliament in its next session will offer millets also as grains distributed in the uh, public distribution system. If this happens, then I think India will have uh, scored a big success in its battle, battle against malnutrition. The um, normal nutritional advice for people, whether you take it textbooks or the posters or pamphlets or various uh, television programs, the entire nutritional discourses offers us a platter of foods that we can never afford in rural India. They consist of eggs, and meat and fish and different kinds of vegetables etc 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 but the the daily food platter of the Indian rural poor is absolutely bereft of all these kind of fancy elements they consist of just one or two food elements and if we do that then the nutrition future of this country cannot be sustained with wheat and rice based uh, dishes. Let's, let's just compare Sub-Saharan Africa nutritionally to India. Why is it that being economic tigers, we are 128th in the malnutrition index of the world? And why are we so far below the Sub-Saharan states of Africa? I have a hunch. I offer you this kind of a challenge. Please look at the food systems of Sub-Saharan Africa where millet rules the roost and compare it with the weak rice and wheat based food systems of India. Probably this is one clue for us to say that there must be a fundamental shift in the basic staples that we offer our poor and millet should become the central piece in this. I, I mentioned to you about the public distribution system, the alternative public distribution system of the DDS communities. A couple of years ago, the famous McGill University of Canada and DDS together worked on a collaborative study of the nutritional status of the vulnerable and the poor 
in this region. We had control villages where the government PDS was being administered and we have DDS villages where the sorghum based PDS is being administered. It did not come as a surprise to us, but it must be illustrative to a lot of people like you who are policy makers, thinkers, academicians. It said that the PDS uh, based sorghum has served very well for the uh, vulnerable, especially the pregnant women and children among the communities of the low income families. I will come to that a little later. But let me also come to another principle which is central to this farming systems of the DDS communities that is agrobiodiversity. And each farm however small it is whether it is 2 acres or 1 acre or less than that whatever kind of soil it is based on some soils are as shallow as half in, um, uh, 6 inches or so. But each farm has its own combination of millets legumes, oil seeds. All of them bring a wholesome food to the food consuming families who take all their food from their farms. Apart from this food combination which is absolutely amazing in itself, there is another aspect to it which normally misses the discourse of the nutritionists and policy makers. That is a phenomena called uncultivated foods. As long as your farming system is biodiverse, as long as your farming system is ecological, some greens come by themselves voluntarily. That is why we call them uncultivated, you do not have to cultivate them. And these kind of foods give you a tremendous amount of different kinds of uh, energy. And this is a fact which the uh, study by uh, McGill University tells us very clearly. It says, I quote, in mothers sorghum contributed 29% of energy, 33% of protein and 53% of iron and green leafy vegetables contributed 21% of vitamin C and 38% of vitamin A. Our results indicate that traditional food such as sorghum, pulses and green leafy vegetables are major sources of energy, protein, iron, vitamin C and vitamin A and that mothers from villages with a traditional food intervention had higher intakes of energy, protein and iron. This is a clear, clear indication of what kind of farming and food systems that we must adhere to in this country if we want to make India a nutritionally rich uh, country. We have looked at the traditional uncultivated greens that sprout in these ecological farms. We have got them analyzed in the National Institute of Nutrition, the Apex Nutritional Research Institution of India. And it says that all macro and micronutrients nutrient by nutrient the uncultivated foods score several notches above the cultivated greens such as spinach. Therefore, if I want to buy my nutrition I do not have to go to the market. I do not even have to buy them. If I have a ecological farming however poor my soil is it still gives me plenty of nutrition. This is something that I would like to under, uh, underline. And as I said again I emphasize this is a product of a biodiverse farming system. But let us look at a recent initiative by the government of India called INSIP, initiative for nutritional security through intense millet promotion. Probably from a wheat and rice base it has taken a very long time and a very long stride for the government to recognize millets as the basis for nutritional security of this country. But once again it is a very flawed, very technological view of nutrition. In, in, in SIMP the government says farmers must use hybrid millets for cultivation and they should be monocultures. It is either sorghum or foxtail millet or little millet or finger millet and not a combination of all these things which goes completely against the holistic traditional farming system. I think this is an extraordinarily flawed view of nutrition and flawed view of farming. 
and we must correct it as soon as possible if we are serious about nutrition in this country. The, there are other socio-cultural discourses uh, that miss, that are intensely related to nutrition but miss the attention of the nutritionists and academicians. One of our very dear friends, an eminent nutritionist and a very, very well-intentioned well person completely loses woods for trees, completely uh, loses woods for trees and advocates that let's grow more and more uh, palm millet, more and more palm millet, eat more and more palm millet because they are very rich in nutrition. We don't deny that pearl millets are very rich in nutrition. But if you take them out of this large plant kingdom context of uh, nutrition, then you have missed everything. It must be a mixture, it must be a holistic thing, it must be a food system, not a single food. It's there that the communities of DDS have gone in for a claim to be recognized as agrobiodiversity heritage sites. This is a socio-cultural view of their biodiversity and not just a tunnel vision of nutrition. In this, they say that thousands of um, us, particularly very small farmers, Dalits and women, have kept away from the trend of monocrop based chemical farming. We have continued to believe in the mixed cropping system which minimizes the risk factors on our dry lands. It might be important for us to point out here that no farmer who has followed our biodiversity farming has committed suicide in this region. We are suicide free. Look at this life affirming proclamation of these communities though they are low income, though they come from a semi-arid part and this is the spirit of life and freedom that we need to follow in our, uh, in our kind of advocacy for nutritional uh, rich India. The last point I would like to make is that socio-economically this is the kind of agriculture that can be controlled by women, excluded people, small and marginal farmers, Dalits and Adivasis who are normally the kind of people whom we call nutritionally vulnerable and therefore if nutrition India of tomorrow has to be led by the people who are themselves vulnerable then biodiversity, millet based farming system and no external farming system which is free from chemical uh, fertilizer and chemical pesticide should be the aim that we should attempt and that I hope is what we will come to a conclusion to. Thank you very much.